Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the one, the only, The Last Science Show. What an honor and a privilege it is to be with you today, honoring black scientists for Black History Month. It's so exciting, elating, and encouraging for all people, especially for our young black youth. They need to know the history of those who made it possible for us to be here today. Let's dive right into another legend, an African-American scientist by the name of Dr. Gladys West. Dr. Gladys West is a mathematician whose calculations and computer programming helped construct a geoid, a mathematical model of the Earth's shape. West's modeling directly contributed to the ubiquitous use of the global positioning system, GPS, that we use today. Born on October 27, 1930, Gladys Mae Brown resided in Sutherland, Virginia in rural Dinwiddie County. Her parents owned their small farm and West picked corn, cotton, and tobacco from the time she was young. Early on, West teachers encouraged her love of mathematics, which she pursued as a path out of agricultural work. As valedictorian of her high school class, she earned a full scholarship to Virginia State College now Virginia State University. After graduating in 1952, West applied for a host of government jobs. In a field dominated by white men in a segregated state, her efforts were initially unsuccessful. Instead, West taught mathematics in Martinsville, Virginia, while pursuing graduate work. In 1955, she received a master's in mathematics from her alma mater. She continued to apply to government jobs and received her first offer from the U.S. Naval Weapons Laboratory in Virginia in 1956, where she worked until retirement in 1998. At Dahlgren, West was the second black woman hired and the fourth black employee. Another black mathematician on base, Ira V. West, became Gladys Brown's husband in 1957. They recently celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary. West and her husband raised three children, took part in social life on the base, and attended a local Baptist church. They maintained their jobs, family, and social commitments by employing a full-time housekeeper. After some training in computer programming, West's work at Dahlgren began with the Naval Ordnance Research Calculator, NORC. In 1962, she helped program NORC for Project 29V, which established the motion of the planet Pluto relative to Neptune through 5 billion arithmetic calculations and 100 hours of computer calculation. In 1964, the Navy recognized Project 29V with a merit award. After that, West focused on calculations for satellite orbits. In 1978, West was project manager for CSAT, the first Earth-orbiting satellite designed for remote sensing of the Earth's oceans. Her group used it to measure ocean depths. This project led to the GeoSat satellite, which used CSAT and other data to create highly accurate computer simulations of the Earth's surface. In 1986, she published a guide outlining the use of GeoSat data for calculating geoid heights. West's work made the accuracy of today's GPS possible. Colleagues noted her mathematical brilliance, particularly with algorithms, which created efficiencies that transformed calculation timetables. West continued her education throughout her career at Dahlgren, earning a second master's degree in public administration in 1973 from the University of Oklahoma. After retirement and at 70 years old, West completed her PhD in public administration through the Virginia Polytechnic Institute. On February 26, 2018, the Virginia Senate passed a joint resolution formally commending Gladys West for her trailblazing career in mathematics and vital contributions to modern technology. On December 6, 2018, the Air Force inducted West into the Space and Missiles Pioneers Hall of Fame. West continues to speak to elementary students about the importance of studying science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. It's so exciting to reiterate she is still serving today. She is almost 92 years old and still has a heart to serve. 
That is a queen right there. Thank you for watching this dynamic episode of The Last Science Show. Continue to like, subscribe, comment, and share for more. We've got more coming. So good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good science. The first black scientist we are going to honor is George Washington Carver. George Washington Carver was an African-American scientist and educator. Carver is famous for many inventions, including a number of uses for the peanut. George Washington Carver was born enslaved and went on to become one of the most prominent scientists and inventors of his time, as well as a teacher of the Tuskegee Institute. Carver devised over 100 products using one major crop, the peanut, including dyes, plastics, and gasoline. Carver was most likely born in 1864, enslaved in Diamond, Missouri, during the Civil War years. Like many children of the enslaved, uh, the exact year and date of his birth are unknown. Carver was one of many children born to Mary and Giles, an enslaved couple owned by Moses Carver. A week after his birth, Carver was kidnapped along with his sister and mother from the Carver farm by raiders from the neighboring state of Arkansas. The three were later sold in Kentucky. Among them, only the infant Carver was located by an agent of Moses Carver and returned to Missouri. The conclusion of the Civil War in 1865 brought the end of slavery in Missouri. Moses and his wife Susan decided to keep Carver and his brother James at their house after that time. As she had been in high school, Jemison was very involved in extracurricular activities at Stanford, including dance and theater productions, and served as head of the Black Student Union. She received a Bachelor of Science degree in Chemical Engineering from the university in 1977. Upon graduation, she entered Cornell University Medical College and, during her years there, found time to expand her horizons by studying in Cuba and Kenya and working at a Cambodian refugee camp in Thailand. After Jemison obtained her MD in 1981, she interned at Los Angeles County slash University of Southern California Medical Center and later worked as a general practitioner. For the next two and a half years, she was the Area Peace Corps Medical Officer for Sierra Leone and Liberia, where she also taught and did medical research. Following her return to the United States in 1985, Jemison made a career change and decided to follow a dream she had nurtured for a long time. In October, she applied for admission to NASA's Astronaut Training Program. The Challenger disaster of January 1986 delayed the selection process, but when she reapplied a year later, Jemison was one of the 15 candidates chosen from a field of about 2,000. 